Hi again, everybody. Jeff Joniak and Tom Thayer, and welcome to Game Preview here at PNC Studio at Hallis Hall. It's the Bears and 49ers. When last they met, it was Halloween at Soldier Field. And, Tommy, I put the tape on the other day, and I was really impressed with what I saw from Justin Fields, just how fast he was on the move. He was just gliding by defenders, making some big plays with his feet and a couple big plays in the passing game, too. And what was a very close game. Yeah, but, you know, I go back and I think about those plays specifically because as, as, as exciting as they were, that's not the Justin Fields I want to see. I want to see the in time, the in tempo, the Justin Fields that's comfortable both inside the pocket and outside the pocket, locating receivers downfield, being complimented by Dave and Montgomery and the rest of the assets they have on the Bears offense. So, yeah, it's some of the most exciting plays of the season. However, Major taking a major step forward for Justin. It's going to be about that rhythm and that timing. I brought this up this week with both Coach Eberflus and Ryan Poles. He is a story right now. Justin Fields is a national story. There's a curiosity about him that goes beyond his high draft choice last year and his ineffectiveness at times last year as a starter with that offense that just didn't seem to fit. So now, though, because of that last preseason game, it kind of tantalized everybody. Everybody's coming out of the woodwork now. <laughs> now he's a story. You know, it's kind of funny because you take that side of it, but I kind of take the angry side of it. Because I worry that Justin Fields is being overshadowed by Trey Lance. And I don't think he should be because Justin, frankly, has more experience than Trey Lance. But when you look at the athleticism, you look at the downfield targeting, you look at the escapability, you look at the maturation of the relationship between Luke Getze and Justin Fields, Jeff, this guy could have one of the brightest futures in the second year of a quarterback in, a, in the NFL. Why do you feel he's being overshadowed by Trey Lance? I know you've been on the Trey Lance thing. You and I have talked about it really from the start of the training camp. Uh, but I don't, I don't get that same sense that he's overshadowed. I just know that now he's got, he's got the ball and he's going to town as the number one starter. Oh, you, well, you have one quarterback, Justin Fields, who leading a really a, a team that they don't know how many games they're predicted to win. Then you have a quarterback over here who's saying, oh, this could be the missing piece for a Super Bowl football team. And I, I kind of take offense to that because to me, I still have a higher belief in Justin than I do Trey Lance. No offense to Trey, but I, I, liked, I like what I've seen out of the development, again, of that continuous relationship with Luke Getze and Justin, Justin's relationship and commitment to Darnell Mooney and the rest of the receivers, what a guy like David Montgomery can do. So, you know, I, I have extremely high expectations for Justin well, there's Fields. There's a lot of uh, similarities in terms of what they want to be. They want to be aggressive teams. We know the defense of San Francisco wants to be aggressive up front. And Kyle Shanahan likes to be aggressive offensively, running the football. And he's got the horses up front to, to clear the way for that. They were one of the top rushing teams in the league last year. Eli Mitchell only played 11 games, but ran for almost 1,000 yards in those 11 games. Really good yards per carry average. But you go to the George Kittles, you go to the Brandon Ayuks, you go to the Debo Samuel. So there are weapons, not to mention the left tackle, didn't give up a sack last year. Trent Williams, a nine-time consecutive Pro Bowler. Those are the, the focal points of our discussion. It is, but everything is goes according to Debo Samuel. He's the guy that complements the running game. He's the guy that makes big plays as a wide receiver. He's the kind of guy that can get so much attention downfield, you got that underneath opportunity to George Kittle. So if you want to really see how this offense works at its most efficiency and its most threatening, it's because Debo Samuel has having a big game. You no know, one wants to put his hand up and go, hey, I got him. Uh, this, is my, this is my guy. It's Jalen Johnson. He, he would like that opportunity. Uh, I'm not sure how it will play out, what the defense will look like, if they're going to play sides or are they going to have follow him around. But uh, I love the enthusiasm of Jalen about this. He feels he is going to be a top corner in this league. He wants that responsibility. That's an easy responsibility when Debo Samuel lines up on the line of scrimmage to put your most experienced and your most confident cornerback on him. But what about when he lines up in the backfield? Yeah. So is there going to be a linebacker out there saying, oh, he's mine. I got him all over the field. So that's the thing about Shanahan. Yeah. He's very creative in the way he lines up Debo Samuel before the snap of the ball because he can isolate where he thinks maybe your vulnerability lies just by his lineup position. Love the mentality right now of the Bears. There's a yep. lot of belief in that locker room. We've heard it from almost every player, Tom. They, they hey, we're going to surprise people. 
you know, you're not gonna go around saying that just out of bravado. This is a brand new team with 33 new bodies and 15 rookies on this roster. This is very intriguing to me. And I, I just love where Matt Eberflus has positioned these guys. He, I believe, as nice a guy he is, he's a no-nonsense guy, and he wants these guys to play with their hair on fire on Sunday at Soldier Field. And I really expect that kind of game, a grind game against the 49ers. Listen, I beg every one of these cameras, <laughs> I beg the fans to come out here and make this environment as hostile as you can possibly make it. it. Make it so difficult for the opponent to have any type of communication. You can have that defense that Matt Eberflus has been preaching about since the second he got here. And he's never deviated away from that. So yeah, put on your running shoes. They ran. Be physical to the point of the football. They've done that. Have the no loafing principles. They've done that. Everything that Matt has thrown on the table, these guys have lived up to their expectations the coach has put for them. But man, that crowd has got to come angry. It's the standard. So let's let's have the fans have the same standard, right? Let's have some fun. I want to see him. I want to see him at the beginning, the opening game of the year, like never before. I want these fans to come in that are just frothing at the mouth, rather ready to be loud and make that offense dysfunctional and allow their the Bears defense to flourish. All right, let's pick a couple guys to watch uh, on both sides of the ball. I'll, I'll let you uh, lead off because. Uh, I think a lot of it is going to have to be also defensively what you try to do to a young quarterback that doesn't have a, a lot of experience right now. Just six What games. quarterback are you talking about? Trey, Trey or Justin? No, Trey Lance <laughs> right. in six, six games, couple starts, only one game of the year before at, at college because of the COVID situation just to, to show him off a little bit. But he is fast. He is big. He has a great arm. Yeah, obviously you're, all, you're going to have to um, – protect from the threat of him running the ball because he is he's creative on his feet. So that means that defensive on front, Justin Jones, this three technique defensive tackle, he's got to make that backfield dysfunctional. So immediately now Trey Lance is thinking, what do I do with the football if I see a, uh, you know, a defensive tackle in my face? So if you want to talk about the most basic part of this defense that could really have pay the biggest dividends, it could be Justin Jones. All right, I'm going to stick on the defensive side of the ball for uh, I'm going to go Kyler Gordon because uh, the thinking is he'll move inside on nickel now they could easily line up Debo Samuel there's a size mismatch there and it's one thing that he catches the ball it's another thing to put him down to the ground I trust in the tackling ability of Kyler Gordon I trust in his ability to move on the ball and tap it away from Trey Lance's throws uh, the tackling will be key this guy had 800 yards after the catch last year that team led the NFL in yards after the catch so that's my big matchup right there. How about on the offensive side of the ball for you, for the Bears? Hey, it's going to be Braxton yeah. Jones. Come We're on. You know, the same you one. Know, but <laughs> you know what? You, so what game are you guaranteed that Nick Bosa is going to be healthy? It's week one of the season. After that, it's a crapshoot. So I think if you look at a 6-7 frame, 6-6 plus frame in Braxton Jones against a 6-3 frame in Nick Bosa, he's got to have knee bend. He's got to have that hand punch. He has to have that feet that connect with his hands, and he's able to flow freely with them. So it's a great matchup to watch. Well, you know, the thing is, after I believe it was week eight last year he started toggling back and forth to both sides of the line so you have to throw Larry Borum in the mm -hmm. discussion yeah, as well right so I'm gonna go with with that as well because it's the two young tackles Larry has a lot of experience started in that game against uh, the 49ers last October but both tackles against Bosa Eric Armstead they've got some young guys in there too they will bring as much of a rotation of rested defensive linemen as you're going to see all year. They like that depth, that idea of having fresh bodies all the time. So I'm looking for Dal Nero Mooney to have a good day and Justin Fields to kick the season off on the right. 71 degrees, 75% chance of rain. So you might have to wear your galoshes. That's going to wrap us up for game preview for Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Joniak. Join us on the radio, 9 a.m. our pregame noon kickoff on WBBM on Sunday. Let's get this thing rolling and bear down everybody.